Also, what's scarier here? The fact that the girl's sort of like a little freaked out because they're, you know, she was afraid in the middle of the night or mom smashing the girl to her chest and slowly whisper singing <laughs> Jesus name of God, the Lord. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, man, if I was a kid in this house, I'd be like, mom, you're scaring the shit I'm out of me I'm going to go back right and now. hang out with the pumpkin yeah, monster. Rather, actually. You know what? Yeah, well, I'm taking my chances with pumpkin man. All right. <laughs> so Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema for fear that you'll turn against us if we don't. I'm No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. We got the right family. I'm so happy. Yes, <laughs> These yes. are the best. Oh, that's such a fucking treat. If this movie is bad, I don't want to be right. I don't know there if that even makes sense, there but you go. this is so good. <laughs> And unfortunately, Eli's going to be unable to join us tonight, but sitting 900 miles to my north-northwest is the co-host of Cognitive Dissonance, Citation Needed, and the brand spanking new podcast, Lawful Assembly, Cecil Something Ooh. Italian. Cecil, welcome back. I am a podcaster. You are? I have come to terms with that, <laughs> and I have, I'm now embracing it. So I It's am like tattoos, you know, you just can't have just yeah. one for Once very Once you get one, you're just like, suddenly you have a whole sleeve, and you're like, what the fuck happened yeah. to me? Right. No, I get it. <laughs> so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Exorcism in Amarillo. It's the story of a Christian couple, the Wrights. They're really into mask stuff, and they started <laughs> making some amateur porn together, and then their kids walked in. <laughs> so they made a Christian movie instead to cover it. That's what we watched. All right. Yes, because it says at the beginning that's based on the true story. That's the true story. Now it all makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Cecil, how bad was this movie? If you love people reading random passages out of the Bible out loud in candlelight and <laughs> other old books as villains, you will yes. love this movie. Yes. Guaranteed. Yes, this was the right family. Of course, they're the makers of such cinematic masterpieces as In Jesus' Name, Halloween Hero, and of course, <laughs> The Badge, The Bible, and Bigfoot. What? Cecil. <laughs> that was such God. a good movie. I would. What? Would you be surprised, Cecil, to learn that Ashley Wright, the auteur behind this film, has directed 23 feature <laughs> films, 12 Shut short up. films, no. and seven TV series <clears throat> since 2019? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Are you serious right she now? She's a prolific artist. Yes. Unbelievable. Is there nothing she can't do? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how she can see out of her eye makeup and she was able to do that. <laughs> this is someone who collapses against the wall when a doorbell rings. How yes, is right. she so <laughs> prolific? <laughs> and she's a singer, which we yep. get to experience. Oh, and an artist. A and, painter. Uh, yep. Sculptor. If she doesn't have an EGOT by the time she's done, I'm going to be furious. Right? <laughs> furious. Snub. Thank you. Just like Greta. <laughs> Sir, do you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst toy for children that is in <laughs> this movie. This uh, this we'll get to it real quick. It happens early. Mm -hmm. It's I'll tell you this much right now. It's a shit based yes. toy <laughs> really for is. children. I'm not at all exaggerating. Nope, it is. You are not. So he, in fact, he's exaggerating less than you think he is after he said that. <laughs> it's so it's as literal as possible. Yeah. Yep. It's no. that. Yep. No. So I'm going to go with best worst demonic activity, right? So like mostly this demon just moves objects slightly, right? He, he throws a little bread, knocks over a book. <laughs> like, right, like This is like being haunted by my cat, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the demon took the toilet paper and ran uh, down the hallway with it. Uh, okay. That would have been way more impactful than anything yeah, this demon I know. does. Hard agree. Hard agree. I'm going to go with uh, best worst makeup. We've already heard from Heath and uh, the, the lead actress looks like Robert Smith for the whole movie. <laughs> but but, but de definitely like the pastor 
is yes. my favorite makeup I've ever it's seen. Amazing. He looks like he has crushed up pork skins on his face. <laughs> it is the greatest <laughs> makeup ever. The end. Oh, and they just hit you with it. You're not expecting, especially you, because you don't know the Ashley Wright filmography. Oh, I it was out of nowhere. Yes, it really was. It might have been accidental makeup. He just might have had a bunch of pork skins that night. <laughs> we don't like, we don't know. All right, well, sure. we got to film the scene. Uh, Bobbing for pork skins again. That's on me. <laughs> so, yeah, Thursday. Well, actually, they were just frying those, Frank. It wasn't, a, it was, well, now you know. Now you do know. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've been waiting too damn long for more of the right, so we're going to keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the normal house living in shit that is the exorcism in Amarillo. Speak to a human being? No, no, oh, don't read the menu again. I, I said nothing close to that. Speak to a human being now, please. Hey, hey, Heath, you, you stuck in an automated menu, buddy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to cancel a subscription, but I can't get through to a human being. Well, if you're looking to cut down on your unwanted subscriptions, why don't you just try Rocket Money? Oh, what's Rocket Money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. All right. How does it work? So if I ask you right now about all the subscription services you're signed up for, would you be able mm. to name them all and tell me how much they cost? Uh, I think so. Well, I thought the same thing, but then I tried Rocket Money and it turned out I'd forgotten about a bunch of them and some of them I hadn't used in months. With Rocket Money, you can see all your subscriptions in one place and if you see something that you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap. Best of all, you never have to get on the phone with customer service. All right, sounds pretty helpful. Do lots of people use Rocket Money? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and it's helped them save an average of $720 a year with over 500 huh. million in canceled subscriptions. Okay, I'm sold. How do I sign up? But actually, first, give me some general advice and then tell me where to sign up. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel nice. your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. All right. Thanks, Noah. So uh, what are you trying to cancel on the phone right now? Uh, yeah, it's called Knee Bend. Oh, uh, what are those uh, fitness apps? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for the exorcism in <sighs> Amarillo. Ma'am, this is a Wendy's. And it's where we're having the first writer's room meeting for the exorcism in Amarillo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, maybe if you have work to do, you could leave and go to your home for that. The salad bar says all you can eat, and there ain't no amount of chunked ham and shredded cheese my husband can't eat, Todd. That's right. Okay, could you at least not eat it with your hands? Yeah, I'm sorry. My, your forks are too small to hold a whole fistful. For a reason, yeah. Anyway. That's true. Anyway, I figured... We could do this movie about that time our house was haunted. You mean that time the bread fell off the counter? Flew off the counter, uh-huh, and the doorbell kept mysteriously ringing. Well, I think that was Tommy next door. Pretty sure it was a minion of the desolate one. We've been closed for an hour and a half. All you, so you can know. eat, it says. Now, Jaina, cool. why don't you run up there and get Mommy another plate of croutons while I write up an outline? We definitely don't use outlines. Okay, no, that's fair. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with that harbinger of quality that makes me drool like Pavlov's dogs, the Bridgestone Multimedia <laughs> Group logo. <laughs> Always a good sign. <laughs> Always in for a treat. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And then, <laughs> then it says based on a true story. And I was like, wow, lying so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so 22 <laughs> seconds, I think. So I, fast. I, I had 27. No, so, okay. They might lie even earlier if you want to call bullshit on the word film in right family <laughs> films. Okay. No, that's a very good point. <laughs> so, yeah. That is debatable. <laughs> so, yeah. At least our, our first lie here. So, we see Ashley Wright uh, looking as messed up and hollow as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. She looks like a fucking superhero that like had a really bad day, right? Yes, like one right, of those, right. It's just like crying for hours, <laughs> staring in the mirror, telling how much you hate yourself. It's Is she just pouring down her face? It's the worst. <laughs> so, so the doorbell's ringing, the lights are strobing. It's clear that like 
Her husband is just off screen, like flipping them on and off real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and she's walking down the hallway the, with her Bible in hand, right? And she opens the door and title screen. We're going to, we're going to go back in time a little bit. Yeah. We get a bunch of her screaming there too, which mm-hmm, does mm-hmm. not go well because she has to scream for a little bit longer than she has, you know, noises in her head of screaming. Yep. And she mm-hmm, thinks she has mm-hmm. to like cycle through new ones. She's got like an accent by the like third or fourth <laughs> set of screams. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. It's the best. She's out of breath after the second one too. Yeah. Right. She right. screamed and then she's like, shit, I forgot to breathe. Yeah, right. So you got to breathe when you're doing this. Why am I screaming British now? That doesn't even make sense. There's definitely a kind of an, ah, ah, kind of <laughs> moment in there. Yeah. It's great. It's great. So, but we, we then we get our, our title and then we get our Amarillo establishing shot, which is fucking drone footage of hay bales. It's a nice stock footage they bought off of uh, iStock footage, which is nice. Yep, yep. It they nice. know spending <laughs> nice. that sweet Bridgestone multimedia money <laughs> yeah. right there, yeah. And then we get uh, a bunch of chicken shots, too, yep. because they're on a small farm that has chickens. And there's a close-up of one chicken that does not want his face in the movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> at all. Yeah, he's like, I'm an atheist, I'm an atheist, get away. Yeah. <laughs> It's always tough working with animal actors, but it's got to be doubly tough working with chickens, I imagine. Yeah, you know, right, right. Just trying to get him to do the things you want to do. So we, we watch her chase a chicken around the fucking yard with her iPhone for a little while. And then we're supposed to have her out on her farm coming across a dead chicken. But they weren't going to kill no chicken for this movie. So we just see like a bunch of feathers and the chicken's feet. Yeah. It's still alive. It's, it's very scary. It like moves a little bit while we're watching it. Clearly still alive, but it's so abrupt the way they edit it too. So I was like, did that chicken just fucking kill itself? I don't understand. <laughs> I want to be in your movie. <laughs> it's going to ruin my career. Cut its own head off. Yeah, right. right. This is a better option. So yeah, so we, she we watch her find a dead chicken. Then we watch her water her veggies not a euphemism. This is not innuendo. She's just watering. But, but admittedly, the euphemism keeps going when she finds a very girthy zucchini. She in carries her garden. that zucchini around like she's <laughs> daring us to yeah. make dildo jokes. She That's sexually she. handles and prunes the zucchini plant. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a good looking zucchini, though. I like no, it. It, it, it is. It is. It's it admittedly. That's a, that's a great yeah. looking zucchini. She picked well. So then we cut inside. Speaking of zucchinis, we cut inside where her husband, David, <laughs> establishes that he will be playing an army man in this one. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he has a shirt that says just army on it. It just says army in case do you weren't need, like, clear. I, I don't doubt that that exists, but like, why? Do they get <laughs> confused without Which a shirt that my says idiot. their job oh, on it? So, yes. <laughs> I got to get a podcaster one now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked down. I realized what we were doing. All right, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, it. I got it. Sorry, yeah. So, yeah, so he's getting a phone call from Sarge telling him it's time for him to go to Iraq. Just as a short deployment, you know, a couple of weeks, like a two-weeker. Yeah, it's like, so what's up, Sarge? Wives, am I right, huh? Iraq? What do you mean? <laughs> the conversation <laughs> turns so fast. Just put somebody on the other side of it to give you an idea, right? <laughs> right. Like that, it wouldn't be that hard. You do that. So yeah, so we we cut outside where she like he walks out there and it's like he caught her with that zucchini, right? She walks out, she's like, I got news. She's like, I was just gonna eat the zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> she's like hiding behind her back. Right, yeah, what, exactly. what zucchini? What are you talking about? What do you mean? And we have some of this great. This is the first time you get that amazing. Cause you know how like, okay. So Cecil's talking about how bad people often are at doing a one-sided phone conversation in a movie or whatever. <laughs> they do like two-sided conversations in the <laughs> same way. Right. <laughs> They're literally talking around each other. They don't answer each other's okay. nope. questions. This was There's amazing. All these long pauses. <laughs> so long. Crazy long. He walks up and he's like, I got to talk to you, babe. Oh, it, you didn't say it's still my line. Is it still my line? <laughs> and then he thinks more and he's like, No, it is your line. I was right. It's actually and we get yes. we get silent. <laughs> cross cuts to each of their faces as this confusion is happening. It's the fucking greatest. 
Like the cameraman just keeps going, who's going to talk next? Right. I'm just going to keep cutting. <laughs> like keep on frantically cutting between them until somebody breaks the silence. So good. Yeah, you know those memes where you have to have somebody saying nothing so you just put ellipses a couple of times or whatever as their line? We get cuts for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this Accidental movie. versions of that. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. But he goes, hey, I have some bad news for you. It's real important. And then we get her not talking and then we get him not talking and then we get her and she goes, there was another coyote attack. And I'm like, that's not your line. I don't know what your line is, but it isn't that. <laughs> no, he panicked and ad-libbed and he was like, coyotes. I just, I don't know why I said coyotes, but first thing I thought of, army, are you just naming what's up? No, yeah. I knew that word already. <laughs> Separate. But he's going to build her a fence but she don't want no fence. I don't know. It doesn't. This ain't no city house now. Yeah, Come on. Right. And I'm not kidding. That's like her line. Yes, like it That's is. what she said. It is. <laughs> so we go inside where she's washing the zucchini. Again, not innuendo. Don't get excited. It is insane how long we watch her wash the zucchini. Like It's like that's the only way David can get hard anymore is to watch her wash a zucchini. <laughs> okay. That's, that's fair. I'm not going to judge that part, but like, <laughs> clearly the movie was like, okay, what's the slowest thing we could possibly do right now? And they answered correctly, which is watching people wash vegetables. Yep. And we do that for so long. She's got a little scrub brush and she's just going in the sink for a while. Well, and then we get this amazing exchange where he's got to tell her the bad news that he's got to ship out to Iraq. And what they're trying to do is he's telling her that and she's ignoring him and trying to talk about other things and change the subject so she won't have to think about it. But because they're so very, very bad at everything that can be done, <laughs> it just it plays like she doesn't know what his words mean or something. <laughs> right, he's like, I got to go to Iraq. And she says, look at the size of my watermelon. Again, not innuendo and exact line. The real fucking line. I feel like he, he was like, okay, well, you remember what happened with the watermelon last time. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, let's ease it back to just the zucchini, maybe. I also had to stop the fucking, the movie and rewind it like three times because she mumbles out a line here and it's her saying not something pertinent. She just says, I forgot the cantaloupe and then starts to run yeah. out. And you're like, Jesus, the, the line you mumble through is even irrelevant. The whole, it's like crazy. Yeah. But he assures her that he won't be in Iraq for long. I don't think that's how it works. But, uh, <laughs> that sounds wrong. Get a mini, mini He's going to pop by for a couple, you know, just really quick. Okay. It's like a. Also, there was another confusion here. Correct me if I'm wrong. He says, yeah, really sorry. I got to leave, babe. I didn't volunteer for this though. <laughs> And then she actually says, but you did, though. And then he's like, <laughs> right, I, I did, Yeah, though. I totally did, didn't <laughs> yeah, I? Yeah, it didn't make sense We're, we're all said. writing in our notes. Were you drafted? What, <laughs> when is this movie? Army's where I'm going. I don't know why I said that again. I read the, <laughs> I read the shirt. And then, okay. Also, can we stop just really quickly and talk about this guy's facial hair? Because it is really confusing, <laughs> right? Like, like I, I, you know, people look how they look. It's your fashion, your style, whatever. But like, you have a goatee, but then the rest of your face fades into the goatee. And that is the first <laughs> okay. time I've ever seen that. I've never seen a half beard with a faded goatee. We're going to say fade, though. I mean, it's I like... He has two buzzers that he uses, number one and number 25. And there's not a fade area that I noticed. I will concede the point. Yep. yep. I cut my eye on his beard watching the movie. It's, it's sharp on that edge. It's ridiculous. And it looks like there's just been so much grease that's just been sort of squeezed out of it. Oh. I mean, I feel like you could clean a pan pretty well with his face using his beard for sure. So like, And I don't know if it's here or later. But there's a moment where she very obviously has to say, you're not going to shave your goatee then because he doesn't want to cut his goatee <laughs> for, for a whole movie. And he's like, so you're going away back to the army. I guess you know, he's like, don't have to cut it for this special yeah, mission. They yeah. need bearded people. Right. We need beards in the, in the army now. When you re-up, they don't make you do it again. <laughs> I don't think that's how they do it. No, you could tell this was a moment that she did on camera because she was trying to get rid of that nasty ass beard. She's like, don't you have to shave your beard? She's like, no, it's a secret, top secret assignment. Bearded assignment. <laughs> like she was DMing and trying to get rid of his beard. She's like, no, and now a spell yeah. is cast. Your beard is gone. Next scene. 
So she's like, well, what are you going to tell the kids? And he's like, oh, in the next scene. And she's like, like, great, great. So then we cut to the the kids playing a game of toilet. What the (laughs) fuck was this? Okay. So I first see it and I was like, is that a fucking toilet sex toy that kids are playing with? Because it looks like there's a butt plug coming right out of the middle of the toilet. (laughs) And I was like, why would kids play with that? And it, no, okay. It's a plunger. Not a mm-hmm. butt plug. I guess it could be both, but it's supposed to be a plunger. Mm-hmm. But that's still weird, especially when they play this game, which is somehow decided based on moving the plunger around and then a literal shit flies out. I guess not literal, a, a toy shit, like a, a log. A plastic A shit. plastic log of shit flies out of the top of the toilet and somebody has to catch it to win, I think. <laughs> You have to you have to scramble for the t- for the turd. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, that's- so I, I think the way it works is that like it, it's like a don't wake daddy type thing. Like you keep plunging and then eventually the shit flies out and whoever it flies out on loses a thing or so or whatever. But like clearly they bought that at some fucking store and they're like, oh, that's making it in the movie. We're going to play a whole <laughs> round of toilet. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and that tells you everything you need to know about the right family. I think honestly. <laughs> Keith, what, what is what is the winning strat in this game? I know when you okay. watched this, you immediately were like, I am thinking up four strategies on how to... Yeah, no, I tried to figure out how the, the game worked. It's <laughs> good. Yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> the best, so you, you, you take turns, apparently, moving the plunger, and then at some maybe random time, a move of the plunger causes the shit to fly out. So I'd say the strategy is when it's your turn, you're just like, oh, look, I touched the plunger, but you don't really touch it. You just look at the shit slot and you're looking for the, right. the catch. You're not paying attention to your plunger <laughs> turn because that shit doesn't matter. There you go. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. no. And I think you also have to be ready to body check people. I think there is definitely a level of physicality that you need to bring to this if you want to win. Or just knock it down, right? Like it's like it's like a Hail Mary. You just knock it yeah. down. Don't even try yeah. for the catch. <laughs> <laughs> right, just kind of guide it to your part of the room and then scramble for it, right? Right, yeah, yeah that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your reach also probably gives you a huge advantage on this, right? Oh, like, see so your arm yeah. length? Like, yeah, big advantage. Yes. I wouldn't want to no, play the toilet game sure. with Heath. That's what I'm saying. I think it should be called the deuce is loose, just to be clear. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll write him a note. Okay, so, and what's amazing about this is that we're sending him off to work because we have to get rid of him for this movie to work, right? He has to just be away and shit. But, like, Ashley has to explain that, has to ease David into the fact that he's not going to be in the movie most of the time, right? She's like, it, so at this point, she's like, and then there could be a montage of you doing all kind of real manly stuff, like fixing up my fence and changing the light bulbs I can't reach. <laughs> Shaving your beard? I don't know, man nope. stuff, right? <laughs> nope. Special beard. I need this beard. You see these cuts on my face, right? It's a lot. <laughs> Sharp. We watch him do all these like half ass manly things, but it's to a song that literally starts with the words, I am a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like putting a little uh, pretty light bulb on top of the fence and like yes. <laughs> changing a light bulb. I don't understand. How. Yeah, he's like, I have a power stuff, tool but... in this one. Here's a, I got a, I got a power tool. I got a drill. Drill. <laughs> So he he even had to go oh, go to his wife too after that was done. He's like, I'll put those real pretty lights on the top just like you like, little lady. I did it just for you. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have put them lights on because honestly, I, it's a little gay if I was those the one lights that wanted are those little manly. lights. Yeah, he <laughs> was <laughs> mad about that scene that he didn't read and she made him do that. And he's like, I added a scene on top of this now where I explain. <laughs> I explain it was you who wanted them lights. Not me. That I have. He's also working real hard on the house in his Olive Garden button-down shirt, too, yeah, that right, I saw. Right. You know, like, he's not in what you would think. If somebody's going to put up a whole goddamn fence, they're not going to be in a button-down shirt putting up their fence. But he's, you know, he's dressed up for the camera in this. Video. Oh, and the, and the rhymes in this song were hilariously bad. Oh, I wrote a yeah. whole bunch of shit about how bad they were. But then the next song was so much worse that I went back and crossed it out and moved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so get ready for that. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, the songs definitely go downhill from here. And that is a surprise when you hear this song. Right. Cause when I heard this song, I was like, oh, this guy's asked if anybody could think of a word that rhymed with cow before, hasn't he? <laughs> he said that to an open room. <laughs> yeah. And, and so he now, so now he's shipping out. This is the part where they establish, well, he's like, wow, you don't have to shave your beard. He's like, you know, funny enough, I don't have to shave my beard. <laughs> Turns out that no, you don't. <laughs> I'm immune to that spell. Ashley. 
So she goes like, well, I bet you're about to go out and do something dangerous and manly and stuff, huh? And he's like, yep, I ain't no cook or nothing. I do manly stuff when I'm at war. <laughs> and then he leaves. We linger on her sadness. And then they somehow found a bad rendition of Amazing Grace to play for us. Yeah. Oh, I was so mad. Don't bring Amazing Grace into your <laughs> shitty movie. That's a beautiful song. Get out of here. The song's about redemption. You can't yeah. get redeemed before the plot even fucking starts either. It doesn't even make sense. You and I are barely into act one. Yeah. All right. So, okay. <laughs> Speaking of the plot getting started, we watch her go to some house to pick up a box of used books and then take that home. Okay. Very important. Remember how back when he was alive, but he's dead now, and that's awesome. Pat Robertson used to say that you could get <laughs> demons in your sweaters from secondhand yep. stores and shit. Yep. Yep. So just keep that in mind as she picks up a box of used books, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're picturing Ashley Wright uh, leg pressing 2,000 pounds, sadly, that won't be happening in this movie, but I was rude for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, so we, we get her. She brings the boxes of, of books home. We get all this scary footage of the books, right? Like the, the cameras sneaking up on them and everything. And I wrote in my in my notes at this point, is this an anti-book movie? And I wrote it with like a tee-hee and everything. I went back and took out the tee-hee later. You took oh, no. out the tee-hee. <laughs> and the you question mark, the end, really. Realize. There's just, no tee-hees <laughs> yeah. with the right family. Also, I paused it at this moment to see what she was reading because I was curious, right? Like what do you, they, they open a book and then there's mm -hmm. this moment where this girl comes out, she picks the book up, this, this, this young girl comes out, picks the book up and she's flipping through it and they're trying to portray a sense of foreboding in this scene where there's like a hit, a sound effect, and mm -hmm. there's a, a, a sort of maybe a violin screeching sound in the background. They're sort of clumsily trying to do this and they, she flips to a page in a book and the book is called Everybody Needs a Church. So here's what they did is they took all the old books they had in their house without a cover yep. and they just, they they wouldn't even go out and get like an occult book. They were like, no, nope, no occult books in this house. We're just going to use Everybody Needs a Church as the evil book in this movie. Right. That is now the stand-in. Just don't show the words then. Yeah, we, right. So, no so we're going to establish later that this is supposed to be an occult book, right? That, that the whole story is that hiding amongst these books that she got was an occult book, right? Because this movie is like all about how the demons will get into your house if you buy Harry Potter books, right? But yeah, they weren't going to act, demons will get in your house if you do that. So they weren't going to bring one of those books into their house. <laughs> yeah. they really in fact, they it. did once. It's based on the true yes, story yeah, of them. That, of that that time they so they're like that. genuinely right. scared of that You're concept. Right. And that's why they made this movie. And so, and, and again, like, like Cecil says, the solution here, this is a blank covered book, right? It's just a red cover on the book. That's obviously why they chose this beat up ass old stolen library book from 1951, right? But then just don't do a close up over the girl's shoulder as she's reading it such that we can read the title at the top of the left hand fucking page. <laughs> and so I don't want to I don't want to bring your guys' comedy show back to like reality and bring this down for a second. But on Cognitive Dissonance, on the other show I do, we talk about high level shit. So it's like some asshole wants to ban books and you're like, you, you think in your head, there are people in the world who believe this stuff, but you never really get a chance to see those people, right? You, you're mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, sure. Somebody out there agrees with banning books, but I, you know, I don't know who that is. I'm just going to get mad at this pastor or this politician who's going to ban books and you're going to talk about them. And you're not really going to think about the boots on the ground, the humans that are doing this stuff in their own household. But this sort of opens up a whole new world for me of adults that are like afraid of the dark and it just yeah. blew me away because I just don't you don't think those people exist and then you watch a whole movie of people shouting bible verses at a dark room and you're like holy oh, shit these real. people exist man they're real. what yeah. the fuck I totally it's like a weird it's weird because it pulls the curtain back on their just their weird life vision and how they view the world and how I can't even imagine how these people fucking function in real life. Well, and what's so funny about this, Cecil, is that, you know, we've been doing this for obviously for years and years yeah. and we've yeah, seen yeah, this yeah, for yeah. so long. And then like Trump gets elected and everybody's like, wow, where did all these Trump voters come from? And we're like, what do you fucking mean? Where have you been? <laughs> Read a podcast, assholes. Yeah. We've yes. been talking about this for a while. Right. <laughs> you're right, man. You're right. I, I miss the real person. And when you see it, you're like, holy shit, that's, a fun that's not a functioning adult if you just yeah. cry when the doorbell rings. Okay. I have a theory. Is there any chance that the following happened? 
they tried to make this movie like 10 years ago and they didn't get a prop occult book and they brought one in and then <laughs> some dumb shit happened. And that's why they actually believe that demons happen when you have wow. an evil uh, book in, in your house. That's some inception level stuff there, Heath. Let me tell and you. And then like two years later, she just wakes up from a dead sleep and goes, oh, now it's based on a true story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. So, okay. So the daughter, like a, a demon jumps out of everyone needs a church and into the daughter. This is daughter two. Her name will eventually turn out to be Jane. And we'll find that out eight minutes before the movie's over. I had her as daughter <laughs> two throughout. So Jane goes running. Daughter three stops her. And she's like, hey, um, what the hell is this scene about? And she's like, I think like a demon is in the book or something. <laughs> <laughs> so they go back to check it out, right? And while they're checking it out, there's like a, a bang and a hiss. And it's so fucking hilarious because, I, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make fun of the kids, right? They got roped into this by the mom. But there's like hiss sound, two, three, bang sound, two, three, the cat. <laughs> they both and then say they, it. They, they yell the cat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they scramble. Their, their legs move like Scooby-Doo yeah. as they run out <laughs> of the right? room, you know? <laughs> So then we watch him being way more affectionate with their beautiful void cat than he is comfortable with in this moment, right? Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. poor this cat, cat you know, hates them. Did, she, she mentions his tail swishing, and I'm like, that's not good. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> the, trap. the kid's like, I can feel his claws digging into my leg. And I'm like, not well, good. then let him go, you fucking monster. And I was like, good. I hope you feel it worse and worse. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> let that poor baby go. <laughs> Seriously. And this, it's an entirely black cat. And in my head, it's like 50-50, the Wright family murdered this black cat for being a demon <laughs> oh, at some point. Because yeah, right. <laughs> the cat's not in the rest of the movie. I want to mention, too, that the, the, the lenses that they're shooting this scene with are like funhouse lenses. <laughs> they so they are like super wide. What you should do in a scene like this is just do a medium range shot, right? So like you would crop off a bust of a person and then they would fill most of the lens and you would be a, a good distance away and you would do it on both sides so you would have both the, <laughs> both the people. And this, they fucking did like a 14 millimeter lens. Yeah. Cecil, you lost them like two words into this. No, they've got the <laughs> one lens they use. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just, I, this lens is perfect. Perfectly good. I don't know why you. That's how they get you. They try to get you to buy a bunch of. Them. I already have a lens. It, it, this scene looks like it's shot through a door, like yes. through a keyhole yes. and a door. <laughs> so, all right. So, mom gets back home after the the book haunting with uh, daughter one. They, they have a letter from from dad, right? So. We watched the mom read this letter for so fucking long that you just know that they have, like they plan to put a voiceover on it in post <laughs> and then they just forgot. But after she reads the letter, we see she opens a copy of Where the Sidewalk Ends. I was mad about this too. Don't yeah. bring my boy Shell into this either. <laughs> Amazing race and now Shell Silverstein. Fuck you. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Shell would have approved. I was with you. It's got this tiny, she opens up, it's got this tiny little CD. So apparently dad has recorded himself reading this book on a little DVD and then sent it home to the kids so they could watch him read the book while they read along. Right? Yeah, he sends obsolete media back home to her so they can yeah. find a DVD. Who has a DVD player anymore? I, so they I have to a... find a DVD player to play it. But the, uh, the funny part about this scene is there's clear continuity here when he says, and I'll be sending a book back home with you that you'll get. And then later in the, th in the same thing, he's like, and this DVD will be included in the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking dumb. Also, we see the note from him here and it's mm -hmm. terrifying. He has the handwriting of a six-year-old serial killer. <laughs> if that's your handwriting, don't show your handwriting in a movie. No kidding. So he reads Shel Silverstein at us. We pan over all the girls. They're Oof. all trying to cry. That reading though. But yeah, Come well, that's on. that's how they manage to cry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Apparently he used a camcorder from like 1988. To record this thing, there's like a flashing red dot <laughs> next yep. to REC for recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a symbol great. for VHS on the DVD that we watched <laughs> them put into a DVD player. <laughs> when are these people? Right, I they yeah. have no idea when or where they they have no idea. It's during a draft. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the time dimension confuses the fuck out of the rights. It's all that's one thing we've learned over four movies. 
of their so okay so now mom's doing laundry when the doorbell rings so she looks out the window and there's the the what we're supposed to be seeing is that there's nothing there what rang the doorbell but it's this weird decorative translucent kind of window. So like they have to move the camera around a lot to establish there's not someone somewhere on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted them to pan over. It's just a Foley guy off the side with a metal saw being like, oh, sorry, sorry. No, I was just, I was just fucking with you. He quickly steps out of the scene. It's like, oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Yeah, the Foley guy was their kid. That's the thing. <laughs> <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> also, the sound in the scene, Noah, goes knock, doorbell, then toilet flush, I think. Yeah. And then scary noise. So there's like a scary sort of screeching noise. And then that turns into ragtime piano. And then that stops abruptly into the loudest room hiss in history. <laughs> yes. It is the craziest series of sounds. You're just like, what is fucking, did they just like, did they just go buy a bunch of sounds and just drag and drop them in a row in the fucking bottom? Right. right. It was the sound effects equivalent of like, you know, your last five emojis tell the story or whatever. Yeah. It was fucking nuts. I think they dragged and dropped the camera and the like, whatever the <laughs> <laughs> the sound device was all over the place. Yeah. But Ashley, so she's like, you know, she hears some weird sounds. There's a doorbell ring and nobody's there. So she goes and quite recently gets the gun out of her unlocked nightstand. <laughs> the loaded gun. Three kids in the house. With Absolutely. Three, yeah. yeah. Safest thing for those kids. <laughs> yeah, the least surprising thing I've learned in this movie is that yeah, Ashley has a fucking gun, a loaded gun in an unlocked drawer next to her bed. Yeah. But, uh, you don't go in mommy's drawer now. She has her gun in there and a zucchini. All right. So you just don't go in the top drawer. <laughs> this is a dedicated drawer for watermelon. <laughs> go one of those square ones they make in Japan. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we watch her put batteries in a clock or a movie bomb timer. I'm not really sure mm -hmm. what that thing was. And then, okay, so we get this scene. I love this so goddamn much. It's supposed to be, oh, now the house is haunted. So look at those bottles, that perfume bottle. It's it's moving and chittering around on its own. But they don't know how to do that, right? They don't know how to film that. So we just have this extraordinary close-up on the bottom half of a perfume bottle while somebody reaches over top of it and jiggles it around. And I shit you not, you can see that person's, the shadow of that person's finger. I was going to say the same thing. It's, it's so good. They're, they're trying to do the like T-Rexes showing up from Jurassic Park and right, like, a, yeah. you know, liquid rumbles and there's a little ripple. But like, it might as well have a little T-Rex arm come into the frame and pick up the cup and be like, go, 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 go. so dumb. I laughed a lot at that moment. Oh, it's so good. All right. So, all right. So it's 3.58 a.m. that night. Ashley wakes up and her light is swinging eerily. Who swung the light? I guess <laughs> is what we're supposed to be asking. And then the, the doorbell rings and there's, there's knocking. Uh, again. So she runs and she grabs her gun. <laughs> <laughs> and when she opens the door, they got that stock creak. Yes. That really loud one so that loud. you can buy. Right. And they, they, they use the shit out of that creak in the this haunted movie. And they start house now. Creek. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, they start now. It's like a Wilhelm door. It's yeah. violent. <laughs> it's exactly it, right? You've heard this creak a thousand times. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, but, but nothing happened. There's nothing at the door. So now she, we're going to watch her fall asleep sitting in this chair with a loaded gun in her hand because someone ding-dong ditched her. <laughs> someone she believes might be a demon. Do you kill demons with a pistol? Can you even do I that? I think she like shoots at everything first, right? Like she checks and makes sure. <laughs> I feel like you call the cops if you just think it's like a phantom doorbell. Maybe somebody's harassing you. I mean, the police in Amarillo, Texas, they're taking calls about door demons like, oh, they have a department for that probably. So like, I've got a dedicated department, just, actually. Just Let's have get, fucking you know, call you know, sign. Like, we, got a, we got a 416. Yeah. It. Yeah, so. it, feels like, it feels like at the beginning of the movie, maybe that was a coyote cover up. She just went a shooting out in the yard one day. Oh, there and you that go. That poor chicken <laughs> caught the brunt of it. Right. That chicken <laughs> rung my doorbell. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, we'll do it. This movie is pretty damn sure that that was pretty damn harrowing. So we're going to take a break and let it catch its breath. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of The Exorcism in Amarillo. 
This episode is sponsored by EveryPlate. Hey, Noah, can I borrow your laptop for a second? I mean, sure, but can't you just use Eli's desktop? He's not here this week. I am actually, and my laptop. I'm typing on his with my left hand and mine with my right hand to save time. And I was thinking if I had your laptop, I could use my feet to really save time. But Heath, if you're trying to save time, wouldn't it be easier to cut out a few trips to the grocery store, say, and prepare your meals in six easy steps with every plate? Oh, what's every plate? Every plate is the affordable alternative to those other meal delivery plants. They're America's best value meal kit. But aren't those meal delivery services bad for the environment sometimes? Not every plate. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions. Their meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint than an average supermarket meal of the same portions. Plus, nearly all their packing materials are curbside recyclable in most of the U.S. I don't know. I podcast for a living. I get it, Heath. But what sets every plate apart from those other meal delivery services is their price. Their meals are cheaper than your average fast casual meal, so you can save money while still enjoying fresh, satisfying food. Right. But does that mean you have to sacrifice on quality? Not at all. I tried every plate myself and their meals were delicious. Way better than what I'd expect at pretty much any restaurant in my area. All right. I'm sold. How do I sign up? Get a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code 49awful. Subscriptions must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. That's a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life at everyplate.com slash podcast code 49 awful. That's up to $110 value. But can I still borrow the laptop? I mean, I guess, but I, I don't see how you're going to type anything but gibberish with your feet. Oh, yeah. Gibberish is fine. This is just for covering Eli's work while he's gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Here you go. Yeah. All right, fellas. Sales are down. We need a new toy. Hit me with some ideas here. Hmm. All right. Uh, I was thinking maybe a robot thing. Yeah, not bad, but everybody's doing that. Transformers, Star Wars. Why don't we branch out a little? Right, okay. All right, uh, maybe like a, like a dart gun, right? Like Maybe with like with, with magnets? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I think maybe you got something there. Yep. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I got to take a shit. Just keep brainstorming. Yeah, so maybe there would be like a, a magnetic board like that scores itself. Oh, you're, you're just going to go right there and... In the corner, you take a shit. Yeah, yeah, just ignore me. Like, I'm not even here. I thought that toilet was like a modern art thing or something. Yeah. No, no, it's real. But I like to lock eyes, establish dominance. Learned that in B school. It means business school. Yeah. Went to Wharton. Maybe you heard of it. It's in New York. Um, I, th I think it's in Philadelphia. Yeah. Anyway, dark guns are a nerf thing. Come on, new toy. Let's hear it. Uh, all right. Um... <clears throat> So, mm. all right. What if we, um, what if we, oh, she goes, uh, what, uh, what, what if we make like, um, like a new skill toy? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I like that. Wait, uh, what were you, uh, big volume, really big okay. volume. What were you thinking? Uh, like, um, like an old classic skill toy, but like with a new variation, right? Thick. It's what, um, okay. So like, what about, um. This is not it's, gonna go down. Okay, well, probably don't flush then. I'm gonna yeah. flush and just see what happens. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's a clog. Look at that. Full blockage, baby. Wow. God, how is it so wide? The exact size of the opening. That's crazy. I'm gonna plunge it. So, what were you saying about a skill toy? Yeah, right. Uh, skill toy. So, um, you know the hacky sack, right? This is not going to push through. Uh, okay, what what if we made it? If we made... I'm going to have to reverse yeah. it. Going to go up with the suction what, now. What, what what if we made it flat instead of round? The hacky I think sack. it's going to blow if I keep going here. Oh, okay, probably stop then. You're going to keep going. One more should do Please it. Please stop. Incoming! Uh, uh, I caught it! Yes! All right, that was fun. Hey, guys, I think we just invented a new toy. Seriously? Shit missile? I was pitching the evolution of the hacky sack just now. Shit missile is way better. So much better. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action the following morning. Nothing having still happened, right? As we're Man, a ding-dong yeah. ditch in at this point. But now it's daytime, so like demons can't 
do stuff. Right. It's fine. <laughs> So it's, but we're going to get another scene of Ashley fucking farm wandering. We watch her caress her melons again, not innuendo. I know it. <laughs> yeah, we get some sexual melon zucchini stuff. We get pruning. Mm -hmm. And then she's mm -hmm. like, all right, done with that. I guess I'll rake in the movie now. Oh and my we God. Watch her rake <laughs> for a while. It is such inefficient. She, she rakes like she's sweeping, right? Like she's sweeping yeah, a tiny yeah. little spot in like a kitchen lit or something. These tiny, anyway, yeah. So she rakes inefficiently for a minute. And nothing happens. Like, I mean, it's nope. literally like the, it is genuinely just a rake going through grass and nothing, nothing has happened. Hey, there's a really big pile of leaves right here. I'm going to break this up. This is ridiculous. Let me, <laughs> let me rake it. And then so, and then she's like, she's walking around. She's sort of walking in slow motion for some reason. The music kicks in. It's like patriotic music. Oof. So she's walking patriot. Yeah. And this is where I went and got all of my rhyme jokes Oof. from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> in one, I don't know, verse, they rhyme on with on three times in Three a row. times? They just keep <laughs> going with on. <laughs> That's the same word. The rule of threes. That's the word. Cecil, you're 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 being negative right now. Well, and yeah. then after that, he tries to rhyme <laughs> scarring with transgressions. I shit Woof. you not. And in order to Woof. do so, he goes transgress. <laughs> 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 next verse. Here we go. Here's the next yeah, verse. Uh, I wrote this down because I was just like, no, it's come just, on. It's unbelievably bad. Scar me. He says, I am no longer bound Scar me. to the pain and the scarring. I washed off the dirt of my transgressions, as Noah <laughs> yes, points out. Yes. I am no longer at war. That's why I found peace. The Lord is my savior. That's why I'm not bound. And it's like, yes. none of that rhymes. You just say <laughs> You needed things. a rhyme for peace. That's so easy. God. What are we oh, doing man. here? Yeah. In fairness, nothing is happening on the screen. So you got to put some effort yeah. into the lyrics. And he was doing the best he yeah, could. I, okay. We're Ooh. watching her just walk slowly. Yeah, yeah, with a bucket of dirt. She's taking a bucket of yeah. dirt from one place <laughs> to another place. She feeds some chickens inefficiently again. I just Yeah. Yeah. It's like a commercial for a bucket and like <laughs> I, Really? So you sell metal buckets in your commercial? It's a new Stanley bucket. Yeah. Roll a marble <laughs> around on the bucket or something. I don't know, like Lexus. <laughs> So now she's back in the kitchen. She's washing some more veggies. And damn it, if that bucket of dirt she didn't have just didn't move. Now, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. I only know that because Cecil wrote his notes in before I watched the fucking movie. <laughs> I could not tell you for the life of me what it was she was looking at. She looks out the window and she goes, gas. It's the bucket and I'm like, of dirt. What happened? And I looked at Cecil's notes. He's like, the bucket's moved. And I'm like, how do you know the bucket's moved? We didn't see the bucket from this <laughs> angle earlier. It was a different angle that we saw. The you bucket. know what, Noah? As you say that, I realize I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I, I sussed it out because I watched this fucking train wreck twice, but I'm like, no, you maybe you're right. Maybe it was a different fucking <laughs> she angle. She establishes you know later that the bucket is moving around, so okay, I think you're yeah, right. She does. But okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> it could still be in the same spot. We're just looking at it in a yes, different place. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a bucket of dirt and ominous music is also in the bucket. Well, right, so, right. Like, no, it, it, it really is a bucket of ominous too. music yeah. as well. Well, that's what she's growing in that bucket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the scene too, isn't there like three full montages in one scene? I was just like, how many montages do we need in one scene? Because they they do this one part with the chicken bucket getting moved around and then they literally cut to another montage directly after it. It's yeah. like, you can't butt two montages up against one. There's got to be a rule. There's like a Geneva convention <laughs> against that or something. Cecil, I think it might've been five montages. <laughs> I think you're right. Pruning. <laughs> Raking, oh. slow walking. You're right. Feeding chickens. Cow. Bucket. Bucket. The, yeah, you're right. Oh, and there was a cow in there too. You're right. Then there was cow. cow in there. Yep. Six. Yeah. It's a montage of montages is what it is. <laughs> Fucking meta. So then, okay. So then we cut to her and her daughter's crafting, right? Surprise, surprise. And daughter three is like, do you ever get that feeling like you're being possessed by a demon and shit's moving around, buckets are moving around in your house and everything. And like, yeah, you know, I have been having that feeling a lot lately. Yeah. Mom's like, yeah, I did like six montages about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
And then the mom goes like, well, I think it's just because, you know, your dad's away and we are but helpless women without him. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. They go they, and they turn that up to 11 in this movie, really yeah. for sure. That's, that's not like we're making that. That's like a serious theme that they underscore at the end of the yeah. movie yep. to make yep. sure we got the misogyny. Yep. And then they spell it out in their hilariously long title card at the end. <laughs> And then there's this great moment, too, where they're trying to, like, establish that they're all having fun together. And so they're doing these crafts and they've got all these little leaves, these little cutout leaves, and they just start picking them up and dropping them again because they're like, you know, clearly somebody was just like, and and have some fun, you know, have a little leaf fight or whatever. And they're like, yay, leaves. Seriously, I guess. The the stage direction, and I use that so generously (laughs) because they wrote the script, but it said, play with leaves. And they do it wrong somehow. They, like, miss. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they try to play with leaves. And then, yo, okay, I was so happy in this moment. We get what I am going to forever consider the universal middle-aged white chick establishing shot. There is, and I saved the fucking screen grab of this so I could prove this later. I'll have Tim send it out. There is in this shot nothing but wine glasses, casserole pans, cheap coffee, <laughs> An orange mug that says pumpkin spice is life. Yep. And I swear I'm not making this shit up. A loaf of fucking Wonder Bread. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is, you are absolutely right. No, I, you know, I missed most of the things that were in here, but as you describe it, I'm like, this is absolutely a perfect, like, this is the guy who's doing his two L's to like yes. frame something out. Right. He's like, no, we want to capture. <laughs> uh, exactly. If you pan down, there'd be a set of Ugg boots. Like I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sadly, it's like two details away from my life. For okay. sure. I, just shot. <laughs> I like Uggs. <laughs> So, yeah, so we see that the bread is moving on its own a little bit, which means, of course, that we're seeing the front half of the bread sure. in the sure. shot. Can I get really mad about how she cooks an egg Thank real you. quick? Yes. Fuck. Come on now. First, cracking the egg on the side of the pan. Rookie mistake. Don't do that. Crack it on a flat surface. You're getting the shell in there. You jam the shell in there. Exactly. Heath, you're going to jam the shell into the side of your egg because you cracked it and it shoved the pieces of shell inside of it and you got to pick them out. Basic geometry. I was furious about this. <laughs> also, just fucking wash the pan. But like, oh. I know you just cooked up some stuff, but there's like bits in this <laughs> pan that are unidentifiable. And you're like, okay. And then she fries this egg on one side like she's British. And I'm just like, what is happening right now? Yeah, she goes sunny. Also, also, she's going to leave that. Okay, well, we'll we're going to come back to this egg. She's not. She's never going to come back no, to this egg. No, you're right. But we're <laughs> going to come back to it. So she's c- cooking the egg and suddenly the bread just hurls itself onto the floor, which is, of course, we're we're watching her. And then the, the <laughs> fucking David yeah. throws the bread <laughs> yeah. football style bread. into the yeah. Might as well hit her in the face. It's so dumb. <laughs> but at this moment, I was like, okay, but this is supposed to be a demon. So like, it's a demon who showed up. His entire job that day was like, Going to move a little bit of bread. Yes, I'm going to shake some perfume right. and move I'm gonna the bread. I'm going to check out for the day. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks around the room and he's thinking, what's dangerous in this, in this room? Certainly not her standing in front of a stove that I could fuck with. Let's just toss some bread over yeah. at her really quickly. Right. Well, they were damned if they were going to, if she was going to let them throw her, you know, pumpkin spices life mug about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, all right, so she goes to examine the bread and see what's up. She leaves the egg, just fucking Mm -hmm. pin in that. We pan around. We see her paintings. She's got several paintings. I wrote in my notes. Is there anything she can't do? (laughs) (laughs) I spend a lot of time in this movie on those deer painting, too. That deer Mm -hmm. painting where there's like a deer face with sort of a impressionist background. And I'm being very generous when I say this. Yeah. But there's, she spent a lot of time. And when I first saw it, we pause the movie to make sure, yeah, it's her painting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, her painting. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. One other detail about this room, this kitchen area. Did I fucking hallucinate that there was a giant movie theater popcorn machine? That's in her dining room. Yes. That's in her dining room. She has popcorn machine, like a whole Like uh, inside glass, yeah. like a big With booth. wheels on it. Like yeah. you can move it from room to room. Like the size of an arcade box. Right, right. Because if there's ever been anybody in the world that needs a fistful of popcorn in range at any goddamn moment, it's David Owen. Right. Yeah. She showed up with like microwave popcorn and he's like, done. What the fuck? 
<laughs> needs so much more at a time than that. <laughs> I'm surprised when they didn't. We were talking about his beard that there were they were zooming in on popcorn kernels. Oh, yeah, that were right, stuck right. In it, right. So yeah, so so she looks around. She's like, "Why is this bread on the floor?" She checks to see if the kids are in bread throwing <laughs> range. They're not. They're upstairs in their room. I'm like, that egg has got to be burned by now. Having a very, very awkward conversation that they keep cutting in on. Yes. So the kids are having a conversation that they're trying to say, this conversation is established and you're coming in on the established, but it's such a bad establishment of a conversation. <laughs> Just like, so then she said, and they cut back. It's really amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's every time it's like you walked in on them talking about something they weren't supposed to be talking about. And that is <laughs> when I had said to them <laughs> about it. Yeah, they do that like three times in a row and every single time the kids seem surprised by you trailed it. off and you made a nonsense noise did you, did you have anything more and then suddenly the lights go out and daughter two goes what was that and daughter three goes the power went out and daughter one goes what happened <laughs> like what information are you looking past for now? each other yeah. just, nobody's paying attention to what anybody else said so mom, she lights a candle. She looks around. She walks ominously through the house. We we look at the, the that deer painting actually looks even better in in candlelight, if you think about it, right? <laughs> First attempt at a jump scare, we see a superimposed person pop up very quickly behind yep. her, but it's like so fast. It's like a it's like a picture of Tyler Durden's dick. Mm -hmm. It's like super yeah, right. fast. <laughs> right, exactly. And also, by the way, the, it, it, this is just sort of, if you've watched the right family movies, you'll know that little Shalom Shabbat menu sign, it's back. It's back. We see it in the background of this. Scene. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I was wondering, well, what is up with that? They just had it in another movie? Yeah, they have it in every movie. Every every movie, we see that eventually. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. That's fair. Yeah, no, I mean, it's important to them, I guess. <laughs> Old Testament 2, that counts. I, yes, yeah. it does. I want to point out, in this movie, the lights are out. The electricity's out. That was a gas stove. That egg is still cooking. This whole fucking Still going, time. baby. Still going. <laughs> We're we're going with the long haul yeah, on this sunny side up egg. <laughs> so she is British. Maybe the demon just ate it. Yeah. The demon's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh hey. Demon's like, demon's like, you love to let's it out. Yo, know, I'll just flip it. I got it. No problem. <laughs> this is good. I needed a little bit of protein. I get a little tired <laughs> partway through my day. Where'd that bread go? I'm gonna dip. Yeah. I want to dip <laughs> in here if I can. So, and this is where she says, get out in Jesus' name for the first time. And I'm like, well, either the movie's over or your religion doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that keeps <laughs> happening for the rest of the movie. The movie beats itself with this so many times. It does. The first of so many. It's the best. And then one of the daughters is like, hey, mom, did you just yell at a demon? Get out in Jesus name. And just, mom's like, nope, just. Just being proactive in case. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to an egg that I'm yeah. cooking still downstairs. <laughs> um. Well, and we have to point out, because before that happens, right, we cut up to the daughter and we hear the daughter go, mom screamed, hurry. And they all <laughs> it's correction. <laughs> Noah, correction. It's mom screams. I listened to it three times. <laughs> she says she reads the direction in the script <laughs> and she she's supposed to say hurry, but she says, mom screams, hurry. And then they run off set. That's what happened. Mom screams, I'm scared, <laughs> hurry. <laughs> what? Scooby Doo legs? What does that even mean? <laughs> Scooby Doo legs. That's so fucking good. Okay. So mom gets a flashlight. We get the cat jump scare. Yeah. Right? Now, no one who owns a cat is ever afraid when they see a cat in their no, own home. It's the like, cat. What is happening? It's just the fucking cat. Yeah. So we, but she walks into the kid's room. She's got the flashlight now, but she's all clearly demoned up. Right. And she goes, I need to go find my Bible. <laughs> yeah and then we get mom reading from the bible like terrified and looking like a demon for sure and the three kids in real life are like oh it's just as mom reciting the bible in a fugue state is a normal <laughs> normal <laughs> tuesday this is not weird so we have to point this out too because she went into a cupboard to get this bible yeah what is she's like she's got spare she's bible got bibles <laughs> stashed all over the house she has to move her measuring cups out of the way yeah. to get her bible like what is happening <laughs> So, well, she was do a root regard. Wait, you never know what room you're going to be in when the demon comes. I guess that's true. So. You know what? No, I didn't think of that. Thank you. 
I also want to just snap us back to reality again. And I'm sorry I'm doing this in your comedy show, but how terrifying would it be to have a parent who yes. can't deal with the fact that there's a blackout and they just start screaming Bible verses in the dark? <laughs> okay, nice. Holy right. shit, man. Jesus God Christ. Damn. I don't deal with this very often. So it's a shock to the yeah. system for me yeah. when I see it. And I'm like, no, they made this movie and told everybody that they screamed Bible verses at a dark room because fucking ComEd didn't work for three minutes. <laughs> right. This is a tr- True fucking story. Yeah. God, and think about man. it. They live in Texas. Imagine how often this has to happen to them with the Texas power. Group. They must just do that. That's why she's got a Bible in every fucking room. Yeah, absolutely. For the whole weekend when Ted Cruz was in Cancun, she's just, she's hoarse. She's reading so many Bible verses. The three daughters are like, no, no, no. We privatized the grid. It's fucking stupid. Relax. This happens like every eight minutes. Yeah. yeah. Come on. So, and then we get like each of the daughters gets her own getting put to bed scene right because you know, oh, yeah. mom didn't want to play favorites which, <laughs> which is great and then we get Ashley passed out in her sleeping chair again yep oh, yep daughter two wakes up and okay so here's what's supposed to happen daughter two wakes up and a ghost or something you yanks her covers off but she very clearly just kicked her covers off and then she goes she just yells out covers <laughs> <laughs> again Reading exactly what's in the script there, I think. Right, That's right. another moment. Stop sleeping. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right. What? <laughs> and of course, but we wake up there, everything's red filtered. So like, man, some yeah. shit's going, some demonic Terrifying. shit's going on now. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely scary. You know, it's not hard to make a possession movie scary because possession for atheists is like, oh, that person is probably going through a really bad episode of some sort of mental instability. And mm-hmm. so that's scary mm-hmm. for atheists. It can be scary for believers because they think that that shit is real or whatever. But like they did nothing in this movie to make it no. scary. Except for once in a while, they took the tinsel off the Christmas tree and they put it in front of the camera. And you're like, come on, <laughs> man, you can make this scary. And so, yeah, and then each daughter gets her being scared scene because mom didn't want to play favorites. Yeah. And we also, we haven't mentioned yet this ridiculous, insane line of craft crosses in her hallway. I know. <laughs> There's like a barn door cross yes. that's like clearly made of barn wood. There's a stick cross with shells on it. Yep. There's like, and how many, at, at a certain point you think the crosses are structural because there's so <laughs> many on the wall. <laughs> yeah, some of those are load-bearing crosses for sure. Everything yeah. in the house is a cross. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So the next morning, all the daughters are getting together to commiserate on how hard it was to sleep through all that red filter last night. (laughs) Well, not just, not just red filter. Also (laughs) a demonic bug bite. Bug bite. (laughs) She's like, the demon bit me. Look at my arm. And then you're like, yeah, that looks like a demon bite to me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Just to recap, a demon did a red flashlight. Mm-hmm. And one bug bite mm-hmm. and then left. Well, it moved the bread. It moved the bread. Okay. Yeah. It did move a bread. And a bucket. Finished a sunny side up egg. Dirt. That was the earlier yeah. shift, though. That was probably a different guy. I don't know. That was the day shift, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, so the, with the one daughter, they go in there, they're, they're talking to the mom and they're like, hey, mom, you know, like last night I woke up and my covers just got yanked off of me by a ghost and I got bitten in the arm and mom's like oh that's pretty hardcore and the other daughter goes and I heard scratching on the roof and they both look at her like shut the fuck up would you just be <laughs> scratching on the roof there's probably a fucking squirrel or something god damn it she got demons biting her and shit and you're telling us about scratching on the roof <laughs> fuck you or this demon was like I didn't really do anything to- I'll scratch the roof a little I guess I'm <laughs> Because really just did a bug bite. Did, was that a was that a washboard from a jug band? No, it was me scratching no, I was the roof. Scratching, I was on the roof. Just, just, scratching just you know. About it. You know the, the story with the guy in the car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a demon. Turns out it doesn't really work in a house as well. It's a, yeah. So, the, so mom, she's getting serious now. So she goes and picks out a shirt. We watch her pick out a shirt for a while. Like her anti-demon shirt? Yes, like, right. Yeah. Exactly. This is her yeah, demon yeah. fighting shirt. Okay. Dressed to impress. But she's like, hey, kids, I got to run up to the church real quick for some stuff. And daughter two, who was, of course, possessed when she opened up the book, she goes, why do you have to see the pastor? As though she's accusing mom of fucking the pastor. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Have you seen Pork Chop Face? I mean, come on. Give the mom some credit here. (laughs) 
She's like, yeah, the, the kids are like, maybe we can wait in the car for you while you do. And they're like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, is she supposed to be fucking the pastor? She's not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the kids are supposed to be scared of the haunted house, but they go, they leave. And then we watch like the camera lingers for a second on the Bible that she had sitting on her, on her chair, on her sleeping chair. And suddenly the little doily it's on gets yanked off of the camera (laughs) and the book falls down. Okay. But they're gone. So to be clear, the demon came back and was like, you know, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to knock over. Ah, they're gone. (laughs) Yes. Right. So God You know what? Fuck this doily. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move that too. Maybe the bucket. I don't know. So, so yeah, so and then, uh, and then we get this driving to the church montage, right? We get the them driving, we, we, you know, why pass up on an opportunity yeah. for a montage? More praise music, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part, they do this driving montage and they show us their car getting stopped for a lane closure in yes. real life for like a minute. A long fucking time looking out the dirty back window. Just like a road worker with the stop sign holding it up and they spin it and we watch that for so long. Yeah. I was so happy. <laughs> and then we get my second favorite shot of the of the movie. I haven't gotten to my favorite yet. Yes. The shot where we get dad in his soldier uniform standing yes. in front of the green screen. <laughs> Feed this to me. With the smoke machine going. <laughs> yes. That's the best. He's leaving a shadow on the green screen yes. behind him. So it's so smoke. bad. It's Amazing. So they had two seconds of green screen budget, apparently, because yes. that's how long this is. It's just all of a sudden dad just being like soldier. Soldier, <laughs> soldier. Iraq, look at me, watch Army. me, so I killed a terrorist a bit. <laughs> so, and then okay, so mom gets home. She's got a little sample sized jar of a holy water, right? Like she'd been to a convention and she walked through that one room, <laughs> and this is the holy water they gave. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see she walks through, and she, we see daughter too, the possessed one. She's hiding behind the door, all creepy for a jump scare. So Jaina, that's daughter number two. Jaina ran inside early. Yeah, because they were together. Got behind the door in (laughs) order to do a skeptical glare shot after this or whatever. That mom didn't see. Yeah, mom was walking. Didn't see her come past. No. And then she's there giving the side eye to that holy water. And then she's we get (laughs) Ashley's in the shower. And that's like, come on, scariest thing I've ever seen in a movie. (laughs) This is part of the porn they made. Right, they yeah, oh, clear. Like, well, we can use a little bit of this, right? Well, right, because she because she gets scared in the shower. She comes running through, and she's like wearing a dish towel, right? Like, that's sure. not a full towel. That's not a full-size towel. With full eye makeup on. Yeah. Still, <laughs> well, obviously, she would have full That's not eye coming off in a regular shower without that's a lot of extra pressure. That's tattooed on, right? Like Tammy Faye Baker. You need, like, a Silkwood shower to get yeah, that on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Turpentine. <laughs> So yeah, so th- then we got, she's chilling at the table in her fingerless gloves for a bit. What is happening there? Okay. I don't know. I think these are knit anti-demon gloves that okay. Christian people know about. Because <laughs> it's like sailing gloves. You have your fingers available for flipping through the Bible to find the right spells. You know what? I didn't think that of that. That makes thank a lot you. of sense. Yep. But yeah, you have good you. like gauntlet protection along like, you know, the, <laughs> the entire wrist and forearm. <laughs> right, right. Burn protection. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Just think it through. Sure. So yeah, so she's sitting there. She's huffing her Bed Bath & Beyond candle when suddenly that <laughs> a book <laughs> leaps out of the box, right? The, the, the box of old books that she brought in at the beginning. And the, we get the book skittering along the floor. <laughs> okay. We're about to get my favorite part. Mine too, yes. Of the entire right verse yes. right now. So <laughs> the book skitters across the floor. And she's like, well, that's clearly now multiple examples of data here. That's an evil book. Yeah. So she grabs the book, puts it back in the box with the other books. <laughs> and it's a, it's a cardboard box oh, that was I open on top. Uh-huh. And then we watch her. Try to figure out that, you know, overlap thing that you can do to close a cardboard box without tape. We watch her struggle with this for, I'm going to say three, four seconds. And then she's like, fuck. And just gets up. And they go. And I left for like 20 minutes by myself (laughs) in my apartment. Buster Keaton could not have done better trying to close that fucking box. So good. That was 
the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> she tries it once. She's like, well, fuck, that ain't it. She tries it again. She's like, well, fuck, that still ain't it. She starts to try it a third time and she's like, ah, shit. And she just... <laughs> <laughs> There's just a demon on the side and as she starts to fold it, he pushes one of the flaps down in front of her and thwarts her. That was, this is the one time the demon's doing the right thing, you know? Oh, God, that was so fucking funny. All right, so then she wakes up again that night. It's again at 3.58 a.m., right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she goes downstairs. She goes to check her unlocked front door. <laughs> she says, don't worry about demons. Worry about people, you fucking idiot. So Was she armed this time? Because she keeps checking it with for the fucking pistol. And I'm afraid the fucking Grubhub delivery guy is going to catch five <laughs> right. bullets. <laughs> no, luckily she doesn't, right? Because she opens the door. And this is the time that Jaina is there. Oh, that's right. does the actual, the only jump scare in the movie that actually got me. This actually scared me. Yeah. They got me. Yeah, no, they, with Jane there. Yeah, absolutely. She opens the door and Jane is like, I can't sleep, mother. And we're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then Jane is like, mm, sorry, I don't know why I said that in a crazy voice, super loud like that. I can't sleep. <laughs> so, and, and then like they do, just in case, you know, they were in danger of nailing this scene, they, the random jump scare noise plays again. And we're like, no, they oh, you already did the jump scare though. Why would you play it again now? Right? The reason why you don't know, <laughs> Noah, is because there was a very one second demon that comes on the screen for the second jump scare noise. Oh, really? And yeah, so oh. I didn't realize this when I first watched the movie, I watched it on a TV, right? And so when you watch it on TV, it's really dark and you can't really tell what's happening. And very often I kept on throughout the movie being like, they keep on playing this dumbass hit. What is happening? Well, I watched it on my computer monitor yesterday and I saw all the pieces and I want to direct your attention to the jump scare in the notes here where I pasted the image oh my that God. they have superimposed. <laughs> what they have done is they took <laughs> they took somebody in a clearly like a, like a spirit Halloween mask and then they photographed him and then somebody basically takes him in premiere and they sort of superimpose him. But the problem is, is that they superimpose him behind her so he's farther away but force perspective looks like he looks like he's about 18 inches tall yes, right. he's, he's a little farther tiny. behind and only halfway Michigan on the screen Jay demon over yeah. there yeah he's, he's like so it's like a little one he's like he's like the little guy he's like he's a little demon that could in this movie and so that's what we see on the screen at this point that's amazing yeah i totally missed that i didn't see that at all yeah i missed it the first time i saw it too i was like why did that play again it looks like it's just a garbage bag yeah it right like, like a garbage bag a black with garbage a pumpkin bag. over it yeah over yeah. the top of and, it yeah <laughs> and david definitely had trouble with the bag over his head definitely had trouble at some point yeah maybe that's <laughs> so why they only got a second <laughs> pin in that by the way yeah right right yeah trouble. exactly so then we get like the daughter she she like wakes up screaming she runs in to see mom and she's like mom something bit me this time in the stomach and there was a pumpkin man Hey, kind of buried the lead there. Yeah, right. Just go yeah. right to, to the pumpkin man, maybe yep, instead yep. of the bug yeah, bite. The mosquito yeah. bite. Most important piece of that story. Yeah. But then she, then she, then mom spends thirty lines of dialogue trying to convince the daughter with like, like maybe five different words that it was a dream. She says the same line like six yeah, times she's in like, a row. Sure it, was it was probably dream? a bad dream. dream. It could have been. No, a dream. it wasn't a bad dream. So any was... any chance it was a pumpkin, the plant that we grow here? Yeah. On our, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, yeah, and then she's like, well, you can sleep with me. And I'm like, if there's a biting pumpkin upstairs, I feel like she's not going to be comfortable regardless of what room she's yeah. sleeping in. But okay, <laughs> yeah, go check for fucking monster pumpkins upstairs at first. Duh. Call Demon Dave with a 416. There's yeah. so many better things to do. <laughs> right. Also, what's scarier here? The fact that the girl's sort of like a little freaked out because they're, you know she was afraid in the middle of the night or mom smashing the girl to her chest and slowly whisper singing <laughs> Jesus name of the God, Lord. I because I'm telling you, man, if I was a kid in this house, I'd be like, mom, you're scaring the shit I'm gonna out of me I'm going to go back right and now. hang out with the pumpkin yeah, monster. Rather, actually. You know what? Yeah, well, I'm taking my chances with pumpkin man. All right. <laughs> so, so they'll fall asleep uh, again. The daughter wakes up again later on that night yelling, he's biting me. He's biting me. Mom yells, get away from her. At the kid's nightmare. Yep. <laughs> it does. And mom says, in Jesus' name, get out again. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. and then mom explains, yeah, 
I just said uh, in Jesus' name, so it has to leave. That's a rule. Yeah, no, totally. they have to. It's like no. it's like being a cop. Yeah, and then the, and then the, the the demons like and the foyer is flipping through the rules. He's like, nope, I actually don't have to leave. I'm sorry, right. I'm gonna be as, here for as, the as, rest actually, of the movie. I'm man. gonna be here for at least like 30 more minutes. This is yeah, just no, the, too, the so. bread is not safe in this house anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and then daughters one and three run in like. 45 seconds later and they're like, we heard you screaming and uh, we were mildly concerned. I'm not all the yeah. way. I had to pee, you know, because I just woke yeah. up. But um, I know that there has been a series <laughs> of screams for the last half an hour yes. from this room, but I finally came downstairs. Run into room. I'm scared too. Yeah. What? <laughs> she says, what's going on, mom? And, and Ashley's like, I think we're in a fucking exorcism movie. They're like, oh, no. Oh, so they're like, man. let's all sleep together on the same bed like Lucinda and me with the cats. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, things are getting pretty serious. Trust us, very, very serious, actually. Super. So we're going to take one more break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Ashley Wright call the police on the demons for barbecuing in the park? Will she ask to speak to its manager? Will she yell at it about a coupon? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the heroic conclusion of The Exorcism in Amarillo. <laughs> I feel very confident that all three of those things happened during the making of this movie over the course of like <laughs> Absolutely. Week, Absolutely. whatever it was. Yep. Okay, uh, quick, quick, uh, uh, welcome to the team. I'm Asmodeus. I'll be your demon trainer today. Hi, it's uh, it's Pucka, by the way. Not a big deal. Uh, quick, quicka? Pucka? Pucka. Yep, that's it. Cool. Yeah, so Pianga, you'll be doing a follow shift. Um, you just watch what I do, see how I torment, you know, uh, just get used to the job. Okay, great. Yeah, all right, so here's the game plan. I, I like to start with noises. Uh, I'll do a doorbell first. Oh, oh, you're done? You're just, yeah. you're just gonna ring the doorbell and that's, and that's it? Yeah, yeah, good old uh, ding dong ditch torment, right? Right? Seems like... Really low impact demon thing. I, I, I I'll, I'm building a moment, Pianka. Building a moment. You need an arc in your okay. demon stuff. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm sorry. I'm just learning. Yeah. So what next? Uh, okay, well, you're going to like this part. We really start ramping it up here. I'm going to move their, their stuff. Oh, well, like hide their weapons? Nope, no. no I like, like bread. You're going to move their bread. You mean like fly it around? Like make it nope. fly and eat? No, I, okay, that's actually pretty good. But no, 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 I mean like, uh, like knock the bread off the counter. Feels like that could just happen without a demon though. Again, building the arc, I'm peeling the onion, Bianca. What does that even mean? What are you talking about? You'll understand one day, but don't worry. Phase three is where we really get spicy and bring on the infernal torment with some insect work. Nice. You're going to do like a plague of locusts, eat their skin off their faces? What? No, no. But again, that's actually, it's really solid. No, no, no. We're, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a bug bite. Like a mosquito? Exactly. Mosquito itchy right on the upper arm. That's possibly the least annoying place for a mosquito bite. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. You keep making good points. That's a really good point. You know, this feels like you're not really advancing the cause of the ultimate evil. So listen, <gasps> nothing personal, but I'm just going to take off. I, I I need a job where I can really make a difference for evil. Yeah, no, I get it. That, that's fair. Uh, like what kind of job were you thinking? Thinking pastor, maybe? Smart. Yes, that's uh, that's a good plan for evil. This keeps happening. All right. All right anyway, uh, later. Later, Paka. It, it, Paka. Yana? Mm, nailed it. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action the next morning. Nothing still having happened. <laughs> right, the, Deja vu. <laughs> yeah. The, again, the dirt bucket moved. And again, I'm like, is that not where you, is that, okay, that's yeah. not where you left it then, right? <laughs> yeah. And she actually asks the daughter, she's like, hey, girls, did you randomly move my bucket of ominous music to the front door? <laughs> and then the two girls that are there are like, what? No, it's too heavy. No, I, couldn't, I was like, I couldn't. okay, weird lie. Jane is the demon now. Okay, got it. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. So we get Ashley. She's studying the Bible for a bit. She starts praying aloud to God, asking like, hey, how did we bring a demon into our house? I have crosses 
everywhere, like literally everywhere. <laughs> if you pull up the carpet, there are crosses under it. OK, so like how the hell? Yeah. The line she reads, I think twice or three times from the Bible is this kind can only come out by prayer, meaning like you can only get rid of this type of demon with mm -hmm. praying. So are there demons with like different difficulty levels? Like one? Yeah. Oh, she, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like one has hydrogen peroxide yeah. or something. Yeah, this, this one comes out yeah. with a Tide pen and then like, yeah. <laughs> but this one, you need magic. So yeah, so she calls the pastor, right? She's like, pastor, you got to come and do some, some demon shit. And then we get this moment where she's like, she's in her daughter's room. She's in Jaina's room putting up the uh, laundry and she sees that haunted book half hidden under the pillow. What what's the haunted book that we're talking about here? Is it Everybody <laughs> Needs a Church? Yeah. Noah, is that the haunt? Okay, all right. Just want to make totally sure. Totally, the next book I'm going to make Eli read. <laughs> I want it to be like the Diary of Anne Frank and a dictionary, and you're be like, these are banned. <laughs> this is evil. <laughs> <laughs> He's been banned in the state of Florida. Yeah. So she grabs the book and she runs to Jane and she's like, "Where did you get this book?" And she's like, "From the." box of old books. I got it from watching you. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, why did you read this? And she goes, because it's a book. I don't get the question. She says, and I quote, it's a book about witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a church. You bet. Yeah, yeah. Just... everybody. I looked it up on Amazon. It's not about. Yeah, it doesn't say not... satanic church in front of that. It just nope. says everybody needs a church. Yeah, right. I guess the movie forgot it and showed us the book or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So that this is where we established that this movie is all about the dangers of Ouija boards and shit, right? Yeah, yeah. And and she says, this book, and this again, I have to, this is a quote. She goes, this is why the house has been disrupted lately. <laughs> <laughs> there's like Noah is doing this line way more justice than that's fucking the pause, deserves, right? That's there's like a 20 second pause between two parts of this sentence. Yes. How is that possible? She's, yeah. And then she's like, Jaina, you need to apologize to God and pray for forgiveness, <laughs> even though it isn't your fault. And I'm like, wow, did you just accidentally explain Christianity in a nutshell? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. God, please forgive me for accidentally reading Everybody Needs a Church. I'm very sorry. The end. Now write that 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, the hero angrily throws away books, right? The, like the hero yeah. of this movie's heroic moment is throwing books in the garbage can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you really think it's a demon, I feel like you have to get rid of the book more than just barely outside the house in the garbage can. Right, you like haven't even curbed it. this yet. This is like your yeah. it's like you're three days from trash day here. <laughs> so. Look, yeah, and if and if your demon is able to move bread in a box of soil, he could definitely move a book right. back into yes. your house. Obviously. Come on, we saw it skittering around earlier. It's got magician thread and everything. Your demon doesn't skip leg day. We know. <laughs> right, we've seen it. Right. So okay, so that night there's a knock on the door. It's not the demon. This time it's the pastor. It might as well be the demon. <laughs> now, this is my favorite scene in the whole It's a Dick Tracy villain with a ridiculous mask. The rest of the movie pales in comparison to this scene. He is clearly wearing a bozo wig. <laughs> he's got, <laughs> like, like I said earlier, he's got pork rinds taped to his face. And he's <laughs> always got his head face down so you can't really see him. And he's completely covered in shadow. Scariest thing in this movie is the pastor. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. one of the hallmarks of the right family films is that nobody except the family is willing to be in them. So once in a while, they'll rope in like an uncle or grandpa or whatever, but they'll put them in a mask, right? <laughs> I feel like the chicken wanted a mask and they wouldn't give it to a chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the pastor is like this dude in a mask doing his fucking pugga pegga corn voice or whatever. It's the best. He's like 28 beers into his evening. Oh, is David yes. right at this point. And I, so I forgot that they always do that. So I just saw his giant fucking meat slab hands and I was like, oh, that's the, oh, right. They always do this. Yeah. Right. That's definitely him. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so she says, she explains to the pastor, she's like, you know, this all started when I picked up a box of free books off of Craigslist. They were religious, so I thought they'd be fine, but it turned out there was a, cult book in there. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. She says cult book like my mom has to specify a kink, right? It was... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so fucking funny. Yeah, and then the, and then the pastor's the pastor's explanation is like, I'm getting too old for this shit. Like yeah. he's like a hundred percent. Like I didn't train for this. They didn't train for this. Like get the fuck out of here. You're an evangelical. This is your wet dream, <laughs> right? Okay. His exact words were, "I don't teach her these things." <laughs> Because <laughs> he's fucking wrecked at this point. He does this oh. whole scene just cursing the whole time. Right. He's, so he's like, drunk. Oh. He's like, look, between you and me, I've never believed all this demon bullshit. Yeah, it's in the Bible, whatever. Psh, Bible. It's all a bunch yeah. of silly nonsense. I never believed in any of this. <laughs> and his insane pork rind rubber mask is making somehow his accent come off as an old Jewish man accent, yep. which made it extra fun. <laughs> And so, so she talks him into running around and saying some prayers, doing some exorcism with some holy water or whatever. But then there's this moment where, like, he's supposed to freak out at the demon and run away. Like, he sees the flash of the pumpkin demon or whatever. Yeah. But what's very clearly actually happening is this man is freaking out because the mask is too tight and he can't breathe. Because it's too tight <laughs> in the breathe. mask. He actually <laughs> literally clearly was hyperventilating from this mask and having a drunk ass panic attack being like, it's too hot in here. Take the mask off. I'm going to vomit. I'm going to vomit through the eye holes. <laughs> Cut. His actual line, according to the closed captioning is Ashley help. I'm having trouble breathing. <laughs> and then, like- and then he says, now the, at this point, the closed captioning just says mumbling. And I, but it, but what he actually says, he is, Take my mask off. <laughs> he's like a he's like a drunk guy on a catamaran snorkeling in Cancun. <laughs> he's just like, I am breathing more. Oh god, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but he runs away. The demon scared him off. And we and we are sad to see him go. <laughs> also the jump scare. Can I just stop real quick for the jump scare of the of the demon because it's a down shot, right? So mm-hmm. like when you're trying to when you're trying to shoot something that's supposed to be impressive or scary, you shoot it from below. I mean, you know yeah, this, right. like you're supposed to shoot it from below, shoot looking up at it because it's imposing. But instead, it's like this super high down shot of the demon, and he looks like the widowest demon you have a widow. See, is he a widow? Pause. He looks so cute. You're just like, get the fuck out! It's not even scary. It looks like a fucking Jawa. Just, like you're gonna knock him. You're gonna take his lunch money. Get the fuck out of just here. Just a flash to the demon's high school yearbook photo for a second. Right. <laughs> okay. He's getting pants. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Look, he's got a mullet. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Also, too, when he's when he's leaving the house, the pastor's leaving the house. He's like beatboxing on the way. I was like, <laughs> he totally is. Yeah. Like the whole way out of the house, it is the best. <laughs> he's fucking hyperventilating in that man. So he runs away. She's stuck sitting at the dining room table now. She's got no pastor. Nobody's nobody's there mm, to help her. Rough times. And again, now, so this is where I started to realize that, like, because they said that this was based on a true story, and it is. It's based on that time her daughter had some nightmares and the bread fell off the counter, right? Because that's the story. And her daughter got a real mosquito bite, and she was like, that is a demon probably because of that now. So then, like, there's this moment where she, like, runs to the hallway and she's got her hands over her ears and she starts singing, but there's no noise. So clearly, like, they meant to add demon noises in the background here or whatever and had trouble finding some <laughs> or something. Okay, her wow. singing was pretty close, though. Like, I think it's <laughs> nice, so. close. Right? It's rough. Could that be more off key? I don't even, I'm not, I'm not going to profess myself as somebody who's musical, but I, even I know that was bad. Okay. I was like, holy shit. The candle in the next shot knew it was bad. <laughs> like, she sings, and then there's like a 45 second, like, ooh, artistic shot of a candle close to, like, American Beauty, as far as they can do. <laughs> and somehow the candle is angry about being next to the singer. <laughs> She we listen to her sing for a while, and then she's like, she grabs her little tiny holy water bottle, right? She starts running around. She goes, in the name of Jesus, no evil can enter. And then she starts wondering if the demon, like, goes by Heath rules or whatever. And she goes, also, also, if a demon's already here, it has to leave. <laughs> <laughs> There's no standing on base, okay? Yeah, you can't be on base when I use the holy. And also, can I just point out, like, the, the water that she got was from her cowardly lion pastor. Right. Like, how powerful could that water be? Really? Barney Fife waved his fucking <laughs> one bullet over it. 
But as she's doing that, there's another knock on the door and the doorbell starts to ring and she screams and I'm like, please let it be Amway. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> I'd like to talk to you about your car warranty. Will you yeah. answer the door? <laughs> but it's like doorbell. Two, three, four. <laughs> Scream. I'm screaming now. And we watch her, the actor, count literally two, three, four with her hand and yep. then scream. It's the best. <laughs> And then, so the kids try to run down and see what mom's screaming about. They can't open the door. The door, the demon's holding their door closed or whatever. Oh, yeah. Demon's holding the door. Yeah, that's right. Finally, mom gets the door. She opens it and it was dad. He's home from war. <laughs> they changed the lock. Right. Why is he ringing guess, the fucking bell? Why? Does he not have a key? Why is he? <laughs> wow. Mom really moved on, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> okay, going the on demon here? changed the locks as an additional just small oh, that's pretty good. demon yeah. thing? That's, that's not that's, bad. That's solid. Oh, yeah. Solid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so dad comes in, the kids run down to see him, and Ashley's like, look, I know you just got home. I hate to hit you with this right away, but there is a demon haunting because I accidentally brought home a witchcraft book from Craigslist. <laughs> P-trap in the bathroom is leaking, also, and yeah, there's a oh, demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to his credit, David takes this shit in stride, and he's like, well, you know, yeah. there's like demons are like spiders, right? That's man's sure. work. <laughs> I get it. He picks his shoe up and he holds the heel out and he walks off <laughs> yes. screen. You know, give it a whack. I'll get, I'll get the demon. I, let me get a cup. Let me. I'll leave it. I'll let it out in the garden. <laughs> what I'll do? I'll put it out. I'm going to put on my Olive Garden uh, demon. So, get him first. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, "I'm going to cast it out of the house." And then they, we get my, the best continuity error in the movie. Right? He says, "Don't worry, honey. I'll cast it out." And then we get him waking her up from the couch and going, honey, go into the kids' room. I'm going to cast out the demon now. <laughs> Still? <laughs> yeah, you told right. me already. Okay. Yeah. Right. Get some rest. Yeah. First, he tells, he's like, go lay down. And then she does. And then he's like, get up and go lay down again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. I'll lay down elsewhere, though. Yeah. So, so they go into the daughter's room and they're like, hey, I'm going to stay in here with you while dad prays away that demon. Daughter, too. Possessed daughter goes. What's prayer going to do? And then everybody gasps like Eddie Valiant just got angry in front of Toontown, right? <laughs> a point in Jane's column, though, is prayer hasn't done shit No, that's yet. true. There's like, a lot of Jesus' name running around in this house, right? Very good point. But mom freaks out when Jana says that. Mom's like, it's going to heal our house, you bitch. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why did we write this atheist into our movie? Uh, right. So David, right, he goes downstairs and he's going to do some manly Bible quoting. And you know what that means? Ephesians 6, 17, baby. <laughs> the manliest of the Bible. This one's got a sword in it. And the everything. armor of God. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he, dad, <laughs> he's down there naming the armor of God out loud to himself. Yes. Just to like <laughs> remind himself of what he's reading also aloud. And then he actually owns the armor of God. Yes, like he's got on the his wall. sword. We see him pick up the sword. Like a LARP helmet and uh, so <laughs> good. And a sword you get from a like a truck stop or something. Late night TV. <laughs> well, right. I was going to say, and far be it from me to make fun of a guy for having a sword while Cecil's on the show, right? <laughs> 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 but the sword that this guy rode off on his taxes. Yeah, but this guy only has one sword and it sucks, Noah. So. <laughs> right, and he rode it off on his taxes because he used it in this movie, right? That's the oh, thing, is that God. the whole movie was like, all right, but in this one, I get a sword, right? That was his condition. <laughs> oh, I yeah. love this so much. Okay, this guy definitely also owns, like, the Nunchaku of Nazareth or something. <laughs> but like, dude, <laughs> Ashley was like, that's not in the Bible. We shouldn't do that. <laughs> He goes, at one point, while he's doing his manly Bible verses, he goes, in the name of Jesus Christ, he says to the demon, in the name of Jesus Christ, I will track on you. And I said, what? <laughs> and he goes, I will tread on you. And I'm like, you know you can take multiple takes, right? <laughs> <laughs> he does not. You can just start over. And then, oh, God, I have to point this one out, too. The cupboards are opening and closing, and they're going for that. You know, the cupboard rattling as the demons going through kind of thing that you see in so many exorcism movies, but they don't know how to do that. So the cupboards are just like, so just, clearly one of the kids is sitting inside poking it in and out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just tell, like, again, the demon is so lazy. He's like, all right, I already moved bread and everything. I'm just opening it and closing it in a bit. I'm not shaking the damn thing. He's like only doing it with one hand. He's on a phone with yeah. the other. He's just paying attention to something else. <laughs> He's on his 15. I will say, though, of all the special effects in the movie, this was the best one and is also terrible. So Yeah, yeah. right, right. 
this goes on for so long. There's no way we can express to you how long this guy walks around yelling at this demon. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, the, the thing is, is like, there's whole shows out there where these people just yell at the dark and you could just watch people just yell at the dark for half an hour on TV on like the travel yeah, destination right. America yep, channel. Yep, yep. They have all these ghost shows and this is literally what he does. He just picks his Bible up and he screams at his house while it's dark. That's literally it. And you're like, okay, all right, now you can calm down and drink your beer and watch the Lions game. Right. right? Well, and, and to bring the mood down again, like Cecil has been, I like what Cecil probably did just by bringing up the lions. This is going to come out on Tuesday. I just, I have a bad feeling. Anyway, <laughs> so, but, but consider it like, again, they say this is a true story. So at some point, one of their kids brought home a book or she picked up some books on Craigslist and there was a book sure. in there that was about witchcraft or, or whatever, or about mythology, whatever, you know, it was a Harry Potter book, whatever the hell counts in her mind as a book about witchcraft. And so, and then the power went out that day and the bread fell down a couple of days later or whatever. And then she actually ran around the house trying to exercise demons for hours at a time. Like those poor fucking kids. Yes. Like what a absolutely. great exemplar of what's wrong with the Christian religion. The fact <laughs> no that kidding. this is a true story. Now it is a true story, right? Because nothing has actually happened in this movie except the bread fell down and she forgot where she left her bucket. Yeah, and one kid acted up. Like, right. And then they blamed it on demons. <laughs> yeah. So, and it'll tell you. And then they got mad that there's a book in the house. So yeah, all those things are perfectly in line with the Christian worldview too. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, and here's hoping the daughter was just playing along and not actually mentally ill, right? Yeah, right. I'm going to ask a question. The guy is walking around the house and he's screaming stuff and he's actually reading what the Bible verse is. But at one point, he just screams out. He's like, yeah, and demon, Matthew 18, 18, huh? And then he like looks around the room and I'm thinking, I don't know what Matthew 18, 18 is. <laughs> like, do the demons have to be like, fuck, I got a cross reference yeah. now. What did he say? <laughs> what is Matthew? Call up the spreadsheet, Joe. I need to know what Matthew 18, oh, 18 Jesus, says. Like, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that means I have to go. Or the demon was like, fuck, Matthew 18, 18. And he was like, this guy knows what I'm talking about. This guy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, don't make me read it all the way out. Right? So yeah. <laughs> I love that the dad tries different tones of voice. He does. Like a yep. scoldy dad. Mm -hmm. But then he's like, he tries the nice dad for a second. He's like, okay, leave this house or no more iPad time for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. And then at one point, okay, this was weird. He said, you get behind me and you stay behind me, Satan. Yes. So first of all, was he like, bargaining with his prayers to like hedge it at that point. It was like, okay, you don't have to leave, but you get stand further behind me a little bit. So, so, so you know how sometimes like you're walking in from outside and it feels like there's somebody behind you and you don't want to look back. Cause if you look back, then you will admit that you're scared or whatever. This is what this man does in those situations. He says, <laughs> I know you're back there, Satan. You just stay back there, though. I ain't going to turn around because I ain't going to give you the satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> that feels accurate. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah, but he screams Bible verses for a while. It's like I have in my notes over and over again. I can't believe this is still going on. <laughs> <laughs> really long scene. They didn't need an editor and he was the editor. So he kept it all right. In. And then, but then we hear Jaina screaming upstairs. She's like scream laughing, right? She laughs so long and so loud that she like kind of throws like, you know how like when you're, you're not used to running and you start like, you, you think, oh, I'm going to sprint real quick. And then you like throw out your fucking hip or yeah. whatever. You're like, oh man, why do they think they do that? She did that with her voice. Yeah. She a hundred percent breaks her own voice while she's laughing. I felt bad. They made her laugh way too long. Way Again, it was like long. the screaming from early. Like she switched to different accents during this crazy long laugh. They were like, no, keep going, keep going. And yeah. she, she actually lands on... Goat man at one point, she was like, ha, ha, ha. like it was so <laughs> weird. Yeah, no, I said she's screaming now, like far off Cecil in an Eli sketch or something. Yeah, <laughs> but dad breaks in and he's like, Oh, now I got to exercise the daughter. So we've got mom holding her still. I'm writing in my notes, Oh my god, the true story is that they neglected their daughter's mental illness, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's the sad part. <laughs> but they, but he, he gets the demon out, nothing really happens, right? Because, yeah, because that's the theme of the movie. And he casts a demon out and then he's like, okay, now 
Jaina, you have to answer truthfully if this is Jaina. So Jaina, is it you? And I'm thinking the demon lies, doesn't he? Can he just be like, yep, totally Jaina. 100% Jaina. Right. Right. Well, he, he thinks of that, Cecil. He goes, all right, well, now you have to say Jesus is Lord. And, and, oh, and it's like, oh, yeah, right. demons can't say yeah. Jesus is Lord. You're oh, right. Oh, you're right. I missed that part. <laughs> you're right. He outthought me, Noah. <laughs> can't they lie and say Jesus is Lord? No, nope. no, nope, they can't say that. They can't just can't Sorry. come out of there demon mouse so we get a big family hug dad prays one more time we have this <laughs> this scene where he has to let the demon out through the front door he like he does opens he's, the door he like he's letting the like cat he out the front door. He's, he rolls his bible up he's like go lay down he starts swatting yeah. at the demon you know? <laughs> yeah. he lets the demon out and then he locks the deadbolt because otherwise the demon would just walk right back in <laughs> just come right back why well, you gotta lock it. he's not an idiot the demon would just come Hope back in stupid we get we get him anointing the uh the door with oil and then we get him anointing the back door too Again, she's not dumb, right? They do, I, I thought we were going to get him anointing each window. <laughs> it's oh, pretty man. great. They take out their great value olive oil from Walmart. Yep. <laughs> and he, like literally that, he pours it into a, a coffee mug, maybe the uh, pumpkin spice one. Could maybe. be the pumpkin yep. spice yeah, one. Yeah, very possibly. And he says exact words, in the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint this oil. Mm-hmm. But that you you anoint things with oil, you, right? So no, he's anointed the he oil, was giving magic Maybe power used... to the oil by rubbing it with the adjacent oil in the cup in some <laughs> weird theoretical sense. Right. This is like this is like putting a little water in the shampoo, you know, to get that <laughs> stuff out of the edge. That's the oil version of the same thing, right? Or or it's like it's like you know how you could wish for more wishes from a genie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Also, if they know how to do all this shit, isn't like a fucking ounce of prevention necessary? Right. Shouldn't you have done this before you went in front of your green screen of Iraq? Exactly. Like, shouldn't you have like anointed your house before you left? You put up a fence. Yeah, you were worried about coyotes <laughs> and not demons. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And then he says, he, like he says out loud to the fucking audience, I guess. He's like, yeah, this is it's a good thing I believe in Jesus. This would have been way harder if I was like a fucking atheist or a Muslim or whatever. <laughs> okay, to be clear, yeah. the point of the story is books of magic spells are evil and then they won the movie by using a book of magic spells. Oh, you're right, they did. <laughs> it's so stupid. And then we pan up to his Jesus sword hanging on the wall. Yep, yep. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie, but we get this title card that has just a hilarious amount of text on it right we get the fucking the the time cube of title cards here <laughs> right and it is the most misogynist thing you could possibly oh, imagine God. it was like mom couldn't worry her pretty little head about actually casting out the demons in the movie but she did it in real life and then we actually had to bring dad in because he wouldn't edit it unless he was the, the hero of the movie right unless it was he it was the one Kicking the ass, right? It says like nothing yeah. about this movie has changed except that the husband didn't actually come back from war. And then she adds, she's like, I put that in to stress the importance of the head of household. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Yikes. <Wow. laughs> like a tax thing? No, no, the no, misogyny no, thing. No, no, no. You know what? You're right. Burn those books. And then it closes with these fucking words. It says, spiritual warfare is real. The devil prowls like a roaring lion waiting to devour. Be careful. Be vigilant. Guard your family. Okay. I don't think <laughs> when lions prowl, they would roar. They would probably be quiet. <laughs> it would be dumb. Yeah. It definitely feels like that would they go wouldn't against carry around a bright red light and knock over your prowl. shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also, too, I want to say that the end credits, thankfully, very short in this movie, five people worked on it. Right, right. And they list that they're all the same people because they're all in the family. And then they there's so few people in the end credits, they had to fade out the praise music at the end, <laughs> mid-lyric. Yeah, right, so right. Mid-lyric in this praise music. It's like, and we love the blah, blah, blah. And that was it. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Like, in the middle of there, it's like, yep, all right. Let's get that logo back up here that that little kid made. <laughs> and also, I have to point out that everyone is as themselves, right? It's like Ashley Hayes, right? As Ashley Hayes, right? You know, the, the Cadence, right? As Cadence, right? Jaina, right? As Jaina, right? Except for David, where it says, David, right? As husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I feel like there was a fight that happened there. All right. Well, so Cecil, how excited are you now to binge the rest of the Wright family filmography? If you guys do not invite me for more Wright films, I will be so mad at you guys. Monster B I'm telling in you. DC. <laughs> so we still mad. haven't done that one, man. We've been I want saving. the Chupacabra one. Whatever that yeah, Chupacabra, was Chupacabra one is, I want to do the Chupacabra yeah. one. Cecil, yeah, you're, you're in for that. The new Atlas shrugged whenever they do four, five, and six. Oh, yeah. And then and that, Neil Breen. That Neil Breen. Yeah. I get, you guys got to yeah. get me back for those. Fuck yeah, man. All right. I like I like adding to this list. Oh, and also, while we got you here, I hear a rumor that you have a new show out. I do. It's called Lawful Assembly. It's with a law professor and a legal activist and immigration activist. He's been a law professor for decades and he's been a, an immigration lawyer for decades and he's an activist in that field. And he's a great guy. He's also a reverend, but he's a reverend from a very sort of liberal leftist church. And he has very, I think, very sort of ideals that I can get behind, even if I can't get behind the the why he gets to him and how he gets to him. And we agree on a lot of stuff and we disagree on a lot of stuff. And it's a lot of fun to have a good conversation with somebody who's an expert about the law. So if you're interested, you can check out Lawful Assembly and it is at lawfulpod.com. Right on, right on. And who knows, maybe something immigration related will hit the news and it'll be super relevant <laughs> some, sometime soon. That'd be great. Yeah. All right. Sure, yeah. Well, obviously, we'll also have that one linked on the show notes, along with a link to hear more from Cecil on Cognitive Dissonance. Cecil, thank you so much for hanging out with us, dude. Thanks, guys. Cheers. It's a blast as always. Cheers to you. Cheers, buddy. And well, that well, that does it for our review of The Exorcism and Amarillo. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to lure ourselves back into the same trap. So, Heath, tell us, what's on deck? We're going back to the Gramps-averse. <gasps> We've got best friends Recycled. Oh my God. The right <laughs> family one week and Donald James Parker the next. Is it my fucking birthday? JP. <laughs> My cup runneth over. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 441 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Cecil for hanging out with us today. Again, check the show notes for links to his stuff. And a perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, DMD Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can get about movies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slatton of Beaver on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Delicious, working hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Ashley is still frying that egg. <laughs> <laughs> she is, though. <laughs> the Wright family managed to keep their children safe from books from that point on. <laughs> Moments after they wrapped, David put his rubber mask back on. Ashley put on the Satan mask, and she got behind him hard. <laughs> oh, shit. All <laughs> right. Okay. And if you'd like to support us supporting the Wright family to make a bunch more movies, <laughs> go to <laughs> patreon.com. <laughs> Plate of crudes. Listen, I, I started laughing because I've done that so many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially as a kid, I was like, my favorite part of salads, croutons, right, yeah, and shredded just cheese, and, and 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 little ham chunks and the uh, eggs yeah. and the little eggs, the diced <laughs> eggs. Yeah. Put like one piece okay. of lettuce under all of that. No, it's a salad. Cecil was poor. He didn't go to the Wendy's salad bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't have salad bars. It's rich people stuff. You had stuff. to put shit in your pockets when you yeah. did. It was, it was tough. It was tough. All right. So I don't know if I'm comfortable <laughs> with interstitial too. But. This is great. <laughs> this is good shit. We're rolling. Literally. It's good shit, literally. Okay. Interstitial too. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.